All right, this is the third and final survey. I'm looking forward to it. How about you? Question one, what does the word feminism mean to you? Well, I have always associated feminism with the, str with the struggle of the female half of the species to be heard with the rest. Um, a struggle for equality with men, which is actually the case, but is never really realized. It is, to me, feminism is women and men who support women's equality getting together to create social change, to create, um, to create social equality, equality under the law, justice, um, to create political equality and economic equality. To me, that's, that's what it means. It means equality. It means the fight for it. It means education. It means social uplift, which I know is not what a lot of people have considered it, but that's how I've always seen it throughout history. From the earliest feminist movements to the current third wave, that is how I see it. Question number two. Do you think that men really need a masculinism? A masculism? Men's rights movement of their own? Um, honestly, not so much. I, I don't think we necessarily need an equivalent men's movement as we need a humanism movement, a human movement, which to me would be men and women working together to create equality for both of them, social equality, uh, equality under the law, political equality, economic equality, equality of opportunity for both men and women. We need a movement that acknowledges them as one and the same, that acknowledges them both as human beings and acknowledges that only together can we move forward as human beings and create better, uh, create more social uplift and create understanding with one another. That's the movement that I think we need most right now. It's, it's kind of, actually I'll give an example. Um, when the era or the equal rights movement was really gaining ground in um, politically in the 70s, there was one woman specifically who campaigned very, very strongly against it, and they act she actually turned people against it because she used the argument that if women had complete equality with men, then they would be, um, then the draft would be able to take women too, not just men. But I see it a little differently. I turn it on its head. I say that if men, or if women were completely equal with men, then maybe men could also refuse the draft. It could also receive equal protection from the draft because people would realize that no one should really be forced to fight for their lives for a cause that they might not necessarily believe in. If men and women were equal, then it would really benefit men too because yes, women do receive a lot of protections that men don't because they're viewed as more feminine or more more precious or, or not as capable. All of those things are not necessarily true at all. And I think if we were regarded as equals in every way, then not only would women receive this equal opportunities with men, but I think men would also receive some of the same protections under the law and under society as women. That's my goal. Question number three. How much do you think notions of gender have played a role in shaping the directions of your life? Unfortunately, 
The notions of gender have played a huge role in shaping the directions of my life because I learned growing up that it was more appreciated to be sexy than to be intelligent. And I was very, very intelligent and had to hide that for a long time so as not to intimidate the people around me or to make them lose interest in me or dislike me because I was supposed to just concentrate on the fact that I was attractive and that they were attracted to me as opposed to having a brain, having thoughts of my own and arguing with them about them. Um, they also, um, gender roles as I perceived growing up also completely skewed my sexuality, my idea of my sexuality, the way that women were treated, especially in the media, especially in, um, uh, especially in entertainment. The way that women were always perceived as the subordinate or the extra or the fantasy figure attached to the main character or the hero made it very difficult to identify with women at all. Usually when I followed a movie or a story or something, it was centered around the male character and the male character had the most depth and mystique and all this crap and I would end up identifying with the male character and the same when I grew up I'm, I'm still told to this day that you know you think like a man as if that's supposed to be a compliment and maybe I just think like a person who is intelligent and maybe you should stop assuming that because a woman is attractive that she wouldn't be intelligent it's still People who encounter me online and they look at my pictures and then they look at my posts and they say, Oh, wow, you're, you're so pretty and you're really smart. Like, that's supposed to be a surprise. Like, um, like just because I'm attractive or you find me attractive at the moment that I'm supposed to be of a lower intelligence or something because I'm an attractive woman. And that's an extremely insulting insinuation. And, um, I grew up, because of the way women were represented in entertainment, I grew up not really respecting myself, not really understanding what it means to respect myself sexually. First, a lot of representation of sexuality towards women were represented as violent. So now, my sexuality is skewed to the point where I cannot achieve and I, I cannot achieve sexual satisfaction unless it has something to do with complete degradation or violence or humiliation or dehumanization. Um, I think that that has a lot to do with it, the way that sexuality with women and towards women was perceived or was um, the way it was presented to the world. I have also let myself be taken advantage of. I didn't really understand the whole respect thing because women weren't expected to respect themselves. And they certainly weren't taught what it meant to respect themselves. Um, they were taught that men were the kingpin or the pimp or what the fuck ever and women were the subordinates or they were the little extras in the shimmery dresses or they were just there for eye candy to be patted on the butt when men felt particularly proud of themselves or satisfied. Just growing up with these perceptions of the way um, the way women were disrespected in all levels of society it really it really when I it really created a situation for me in which when I was in my early 20s, um, or my late teens or early 20s, I didn't really know what it meant to respect oneself or to guard oneself against that perception because that perception was law. It was the way women were perceived and the way that media and entertainment taught them to perceive themselves. I did end up taken advantage of by men in, entertain in the entertainment business, I did end up disrespecting myself because I didn't... It, it was a form of brainwashing. 
all of these things, I don't know if I will ever live up to my full potential because I was taught to value the sexual side of what I could be to society, the way that I could satisfy society sexually, as opposed to how I could impact it mentally and socially and and what I could really give to the world. As, as far as my generation growing up was concerned, what I could give the world was my body and use of it and use of and uh, representations of it, representations of me sexually as men would like to see me as opposed to representing myself mentally and to my full capacity, all that I could do and give to the world. And that pisses me off a little. It really does. It really, really does. And, um, I don't like what expectations for women when I was growing up turned me into. I don't like the fact that I unconsciously stepped to the side or allowed myself to be less of myself so that people around me would be more comfortable or so that I could conform to this expectation that I would be the sex symbol just because I was attractive. And I have no desire to do that or be that anymore. If people find me attractive, then it's because they will find me attractive for me and as my full self, and that's fine. But I'm not going to lessen myself anymore to make that true. To make sure that people find me attractive. Because that's not my main goal. That's not what I'm most concerned with. I'm most concerned with how fucked up this world is. And how I know I personally can do something about it or can at least try to do as much as I can. I know that I am an intelligent human being, and I have a lot to offer. I also have a big heart, and I'm going to do as much as I can to satisfy that side of me, too. I don't really care to appeal sexually to anyone anymore. It's At least that's not my main goal. I don't care to be involved in entertainment anymore, unless entertaining entertains me too. That's the end of my rant for question three. Let's uh, move on to the next one, shall we? Question four. Do you think you would have very different goals along with different values if you had been male? You know, I can't say for sure what I would have been like if I had been born male. Um, I do have concerns about how my sexuality would have presented itself and how I would have been reacted to if that were the case. Because for one, I'm a very sexual person and I am also sexually aggressive with my partners. If I had been born male with even more to worry about as far as hormones and, and social awkwardness, not to say specifically that males were more so socially awkward, but my aggression, had I been born male, might have been taken a little more seriously, or taken a little more seriously as a threat. I actually wonder if I might have been shunned socially, or maybe even locked up by now. Um... I can't say for sure if I would have been more interested in things that are specifically considered more masculine pursuits as those are things that I pursued more often as a woman because I was told that, well, this is more masculine, so you wouldn't have as much interest in this. Pfft, bullshit. Honestly, it's, it's very difficult to say. I don't think... I don't think I probably would have taken the uh, feminist movement as seriously as I do. In fact, I think I probably would have mocked it a time or two. Um, I probably wouldn't see as much inequality for women as I do as a woman. Because that just seems to be the way it is. When you're the one squashed, you see the squashing. If you're not the one squashed, then you ask the one being squashed why they're bitching so much. It's just the way it is, I guess. 
So honestly, I can't completely answer that question except um, with those two, or with those few um, guesses, I suppose. I'm very grateful to have taken part in this survey. It's very interesting to me. You've got some really good questions there. And um, I hope everyone else is able to learn a thing or two from the answers, or maybe even to uh, think deeply about them on their own. Feel free to respond. I'm, I'm giving an open invitation for others to respond to them as well. Uh, maybe even video responses in the comment section. That would be great. And I guess I can't wait till next time. Thank you very much for listening.